Hi, so I just wanted to give a update on um, my birds. I've lost uh, two birds recently. They've passed away. So I want to talk about them and to let you know because you might ask, where are they? Um, so about three weeks ago, my Linny or Linolata parakeet a nugget, he passed away. He was the Cremino, the cream, the cream Linny nugget. He would have been 14, yeah, 14 next month. So he's, he was a pretty, you know, older Linny. He was crippled. He was blind. He had glaucoma. He spent, I would say, 99.9% .9 of his time on the floor of the cage. He liked to burrow and he couldn't um, get up on the perches because of his feet. He was like crippled and he couldn't grasp onto the perches even if I had them, you know, wrap with vet wrap or anything like that. Sometimes he could stick on the, the rope perches, but he would kind of fall over. So I had him in a smaller cage, you know, that's low, not so tall, so in case he fell. But um, I've never, hardly ever, ever saw him up high. So he had his own little water bowl um, down below on the floor, which was a smaller one with not too much water in it. And, you know, I gave him bathing water, which is a small amount. But what happened, what I believe happened, and I feel really bad, I feel guilty, and I feel responsible is um three weeks ago i was vacuuming and um whenever i vacuum all my birds love to bathe including my linnies and including uh, including nuggets so i always give them bath water and um so that day when i i vacuumed and then i came in the room you know later on i noticed him up above higher on the cage in a different water bowl with his tail sticking up and i thought what is he doing up there and what's he, what's he doing why would he go up there and i called him he didn't move when i went i, I took him out of there and he was he, he passed away he was he was he was gone he was in his water bowl up high and and i was obviously freaking out i don't know why he went up there he had all the bath water down below and his drinking water. And so when I vacuumed, he must have just got so excited that he went up there to take a bath. And he, he fell in, he couldn't get out, and he drowned. So I feel very, very responsible that I never thought about that, that he would even go up there and fall because the dish that I had was a, a covered dish. You put a cover on it and... Um, I'll show you. I'll put a picture in here. So he must have crawled up there and trying to bathe or take a drink. I don't know. And he fell in and he couldn't get out. And and, and he drowned. Unless he passed away at the same moment and he fell in. I, I don't know. But he couldn't grasp. I don't know how he got there because he couldn't grasp on with his little crippled feet. They were all arthritic. And he was blind and glaucoma. Or yeah, glaucoma is that what you call it? He had all kinds of problems. Um, you know, he's been to the, the vet previously and I've asked her, my vet, if I should euthanize him. That was like maybe last year. And she said, no, no, he's fine. He's eating, he's drinking, he's talking, he's singing. He's, he loves pickles. His, his girlfriend, they feed each other and they sleep together. And she didn't see a reason to, to euthanize him. I just felt bad for him because he's always on the floor and he, he got dirty on his feet and his, his, his under his tail because of, you know, the poop. You know, he poop and walk in it. I, I cleaned him and cleaned him all the time. I had to wash him and wash his feet and all that. But um, yeah, I just wanted to tell you because if you have a bird, especially if it's crippled and blind, make sure you do not give them a deep dish of water, anything, bathing water, drinking water. Just give them a little bit, a little tiny bit at a time and refill it often. Um, I'm surprised that happened to me and I'm surprised I didn't know that. I've had birds for many, many years and, you know, educate all of you and what I know. And now this happened. But sometimes, you know, this is how we learn from, from our mistakes. And obviously I learned from, from this one. Sorry. Hang on. I promise I wouldn't cry. And uh, anyways, I, I feel so bad because... He was such a nice bird and so cute. And every time he saw me, he would say, me, monster. Urgh. And he'd say, hi. And now I don't hear that anymore. 
So anyways, on top of that, uh, was that uh, four days later, uh, my Goldie's Lurkey Dazzle, he passed away. And I was like, what's going on? What's going on? Like, you know, two birds and not, not even a week. And um, so what happened is when Nugget passed away, I believe it was a Sunday, um, I noticed Dazzle's cage, the bottom of it was like pretty wet, like soaking wet. Like these are lorikeet, they have a wet, a wet droppings because their diet is wet. Eating, you know, nectar with fruits, just a watery diet. So what goes in comes out. And I thought to myself, how do you know when a lorikeet has diarrhea? I'm like, yeah, it's kind of, kind of funny, but it's not. I'm thinking, well, he looks like he must have it because his cage is like, like triple wet. Like there's no way I just cleaned it. And it's like, like someone took a cup of water and poured it in there. I thought there's a, there's an issue and I said okay I'm gonna phone the vet in the morning and I did notice his bowl of water was really really low and I'm thinking he never drinks that much water ever I'm thinking okay he's drinking all the water and it's coming out of him obviously I thought okay wow he's got a, he's got an issue and so when I woke up I filled his water again it was bone dry he drank all like a lot of water he drank all of it like dry to the bone like he must have been licking it all up and his cage was like like a swamp at the bottom, like all oh, soaking wet. I thought there's something going on. I thought maybe he's diabetic. So I phoned the vet, and um, of course they were booked for months. And but they could see me for an emergency fee every time I call there. It's an emergency fee because they're booked forever. I just wish more vets would open up because I I can never get in there without paying. I think it's three hundred dollars just to get in because they're squeezing you in. I guess. That's the problem, but I had to. I had no choice. He was very ill. And then I noticed him when I brought him that day. Um, his eyes were closed. He was sleeping with his head, you know, behind him. And uh, But he just kept wanting to drink, 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 drink. And then his crop was enlarged, like huge. I thought maybe he has a crop infection. But then I figured since he's drinking, his crop is all full of water. And it just, he looked huge. And I thought, well, maybe there's an issue. Maybe he's got an impaction and he's trying to get it out. I, I don't know what it is. So anyways, I took him to the vet. The vet um, looked him over. His weight was fine. His body score was okay. And um, they took his blood, the CBC, and they took more blood for the viral testing. And because I had a problem with my ring neck before too, it's a good thing to, to check for. So um, then they did a crop smear and a fecal, um, I guess it's called a smear, uh, you know, in, in, the, in the vet clinic. And his crop was fine. And they did the blood there at the clinic as well. And they said his, every, all the blood is good, no, no kidney problem, no liver problem, nothing. But his glucose was very, very high. But they said, but most lorries, it is high because all they eat is sugar, right? They eat a sugar fruity diet. So he said it was actually pretty high and I said what are the chances he has diabetes because I told him about the water drinking and all that So He says they rarely ever see that they've never really heard of it It never even occurred to them or anything like that I said well, what are the what are the chances it possibly could be and he said and you can't even treat it There's no treatment or anything so he checked um, his fecal and he found some negative gram stains I think it's called so he said, well, let's start with that. We'll give him antibiotics and we'll see how he does. And um, so I did. I believe that was on Monday. And um, he just kept getting worse. We had to figure out the medication because usually it was one drop in, in the mouth, but I couldn't catch him. He just goes bananas in his cage. I didn't want to freak him out twice a day to catch him to put him in his mouth. So usually it's 10 drops per ounce of water. But I said, well, he's drinking all of his water. That means he drink 10 drops of it. He said, that's not good. He can like overdose. So he said, try five. And I thought, five, I might be a little high too. But anyways, I tried the five and he drank his whole water. And I thought, I'm going to put it in the nectar because he's drinking more nectar. Or he's drinking more water than the nectar. So I put in his nectar and it was better. He didn't drink all of that. But once he finished the water, he would go drink the nectar like he just, he couldn't get en enough water. He just basically drank like 24 hours a day. He, he couldn't stop. He couldn't stop. I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? And um, anyways, I phoned the vet and explained it and everything else. So they had to wait for the viral test. And they said, just give it a few more days. Of course, he got worse and worse and worse. Then he started getting wobbly. 
he was wobbling and I thought maybe he's got um like you can get toxic from drinking too much water all at once I remember my doctor telling me that for some tests he said you can drink it all at once but you might get um, wobbly and weak or faint or something like that I forget what it's called but it's basically you got you're toxic from drinking water and I thought I'm taking this water away and just giving it to him randomly and taking out the um yeah the medication was in the in the um the nectar at this point but I took away his water and I thought I'm going to stop giving him the drops because maybe he's toxic from the drops or it could be from the water I didn't know what to do and um then he started having a, a seizure he started having seizures wobbling seizures 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 flipping around flipping around then he would stop and then um was it like that was like four days later he was really bad and I thought I'm taking him to the vet the next day and um it was evening of course and I found out what, what else can I do I don't know what, I didn't know what to do so basically I put him like in a warm hospital cage and uh he started doing the seizures he wouldn't stop I was up till like maybe 12 30 in the morning and I had to work the next day I fell asleep I couldn't stay up any longer and I woke up at 4 30 in the morning to check on him and he passed away so he passed away between 12 30 and 4 30 in the morning I phoned the vet I went right there with him they did a necropsy they had to send away um you know samples of his you know liver and kidneys whatever they do um so basically i just got a call the other day and there wasn't really many findings but maybe his pancreas they believe it's something wrong with the pancreas which would mean it could have been diabetes because he couldn't process his sugar food he couldn't process the, the diet um through his pancreas and they believe there's a possibility it could have been diabetes but there's no proof like we can't rule out diabetes but there's other things that could mimic that so the vet saying is like maybe 90 percent it could be diabetes we really don't know there was no definitive um answer but i'm thinking it was it was diabetes i, I don't know for sure but anyways his viral testing came back and he was fine he didn't have any viruses which i'm grateful for because you've seen my past video I had a problem with my ring neck who I had to rehome um, because he had polyoma and he wasn't with my small birds in my in my small bird room anyways and so Dazzle's okay which means probably the rest of my flock is, is fine because if my small birds had it then um, Dazzle would have had it as well so I'm sure they're okay but I lost so I lost Dazzle and Nugget Dazzle was only eight a nugget would have been 14 and then I had to rehome my ring neck about six weeks ago so I lost like three birds but fantasy he's okay he's doing actually great he's uh, having a great time in his new home and um, I'm happy about that at least he didn't pass away or anything so his life is okay so I'm, I'm not too worried about him at the moment but it was a hard time to lose the two birds and on top of that my rabbit daisy was sick at the same time she was at the vet the same time um dazzle was she has calcium in her bladder like a big blockage of it that they had to try to get out and i have to give her fluids under her skin um to make sure she can the urine will go through it and, and break up the calcium but she i've almost had her for i think nine years next month and i found her as an adult so i don't know how old she is she could be 10 11 12 13 we don't know so i was having a hard time with her dazzle nugget fantasy and then you know i lost my dog last november so having a lot of pets you know you have to deal with a lot of losses and a lot of grief so it's never that easy but i know it comes with the territory what can you do um but grieve and you know move on and take care of the rest of my pets so anyways i feel really bad about nugget and i feel responsible anyway i'm here with my dogs where is she where are you hey and voices where are you there he is <laughs> there's where are you i can't even see you anyway she's here i don't know how to angle the camera there she is yeah <laughs> they make me happy and um 
so anyways i just thought that i would update you and let you know because you might be wondering i don't know where to look i'm on my phone i look over there i look over there maybe right here in the hole i don't know so you might be wondering where those birds are but anyways pickles my other Linny, she's been screaming for three weeks she's quiet now but every morning she screams for two or three hours And when she's out, I swear she's looking for him. She's all over the room, screaming, 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 screaming. So I've moved her cage. I've given her new toys. I give her lots of good food. Um, talk to her, you know, play with her. She doesn't really like to be interacted with. She doesn't step up or anything, but she likes to come out. So I let her out and she flies around and she's become friends with one of my budgies. And my budgie Splash hangs around with her and keeps her company. So she's getting better. You know day by day she is um grieving nugget and my dog oasis he was very close with my other dog indy that passed away so it's been about what's that five months now he was having a lot of issues um because he was gone illusion is fine i think oasis was closer to indy so it's hard managing all these these pets and managing them all and taking care of their grieving issues while i'm grieving at the same time but anyways <laughs> I just thought I'd let you know the update on my animals and, and um, sometimes it's hard and that's why it's hard for me to make, you know, certain videos or um, I like to make the quick videos where I don't have to edit them very much. Just watch my birds, like being birds, um, you know, taking a shower or whatnot. I hope you don't mind. So I'll try to come up with some, you know, more quality videos because sometimes I tried and I just, I just couldn't do it. I just didn't feel like it. I had, you know, issue, issues myself. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for listening. Bye.